welcome guys to another video and this video is going to be for the 200-301 CCNA exam the new exam and we are going to be configuring VNNs um, normal range and we are going to be doing an access ports with data and also voice and we are going to be configuring those phones with um, with extensions and all that so it's going to be a really good a little bit long video as well so just stay uh, with me through this video. We are going to be using Packet Tracer. Uh, Packet Tracer is free. You can download it from Cisco. And like I said, it is a free software. So let's go ahead and start with this configuration, guys. Um, what we have right now is that I haven't configured anything. So I'm first going to start with the switch. So we are going to have <clears throat> a access um, port right here and this access port is going to have two VLANs yes an access ports an access port with two VLAN which is basically a trunk but it is it is an access port right and we are going to reconfigure VLAN 40 for the voice VLAN and they and VLAN 20 for the data VLAN and we also like you can see right now we have two IP phones and two um, computers then we are going to move on to the router and we are going to be configuring a router on a stick. So we are going to have two sub interfaces. We are going to configure the HTTP. Then we are going to be um, configuring the. <clears throat> we are going to configure the e-phones and the telephony services in this Cisco router. And if you want to do the same, you have to make sure that you are using the 2811 router. So if you go into the router devices, you want to use the last one all the way to the right. Uh, 2811 so you can get the telephony service so let's go ahead and start with this uh, video so like I said we are going to start with uh, the switch configuration so let's go ahead and do that enable config T let's go ahead and make this bigger so you guys can see everything so the first thing that we want to do we want to create two VLANs VLAN 40 we are going to name this voice it is our voice VLAN and then VLAN <coughs> 20 and it's going to be named the data VLAN that's for the data for the computers to communicate then we want to go into interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 which is this one right here it is going to be a switch ports mode access then we are going to do switch ports access uh, well actually let's go ahead and do just the VLAN first at the other voice first voice VLAN is going to be 40 then we are going to do switch ports access VLAN 20. All right. Then we want to go into interface fast Ethernet series slash 2, uh, which is on this side. So we configure this one on that side. And we are going to do a switch port mode access. Then we have to configure the voice VLAN 40. And then we configure the access VLAN for VLAN 20 or the data VLAN. Good. So that is good. Now, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to go ahead and configure the a trunk because we need to there's going to be two different VLANs going through here and we are going to do right on a stick so we want to go into interface faster than to SS3 switch ports mode trunk then switch port trunk allow VLAN all I want to allow all of them on that trunk and we can do another shutdown just in case it is um, shut down okay so we are done with the configuration of the switch I also like to do a host name s1 then if you do an exit and if you want to verify your configuration uh, what you could do to verify your configuration is that you want to do a show interfaces fast ethernet zero slash one switch port and over here it will tell you what is going on in this port as you can see we have an access port which is for vlan 20 it is data and then we have another vlan right so it is trunking and the truncated vlan is vlan one the default uh, the voice VLAN is 40 and you can see everything what happening what's happening we have encapsulation that one queue so it's good and another command that you can do is instead of switch ports at the end you want to do trunk or let me see oops show interfaces let's see show interfaces trunk there is no trunk show interface trunk so there is nothing trunk in right now that's because the, the interfaces are not really up so let's go ahead and go uh, and do a copy run start so 
so we can so we can save our configuration so you can see right now it is building that configuration so that is good now we can go ahead and move on into the switch into the router so in this router we're going to config t let's give it a host name of r1 for now so um, the next step will be just to configure the uh, DHCP. Um, so we are going to configure the HP for VLAN 40 and for VLAN 20. So let's go ahead and do IP DHCP. I want to exclude first. And I want to exclude 192.8.20.1, which is going to be the default for um, the data VLAN. And then 40, we want to exclude as well. Then we want to do IP DHCP pool. And we are going to be calling this voice. After we do that, we want to do the network. It's 192.8.40.0.255.255.255.0. Then you want to do the default router. It's 192.8.40.1. After that is done, you want to do a option 150. And after you do that, you want to do the IP 192.8.40.1. And this option 150, what it does is it specifies the TFTP server, and the TFTP server is where the um, IP phones are going to be getting their configuration. So whenever I configure those extensions and all that stuff, um, the IP phones are going to get it from this option 150 IP 192.8.40.1. Okay. So now let's go ahead and configure the IP DHCP pool data for the data. Our network is going to be 192.8.20.1. That 20.0. 255.255.255.0. The default router, 192.8.20.1. That's good. Now we can go ahead and exit. After that is done, we need to go ahead and configure fast than a zero slash zero with uh, we are going to first no shut down that interface no shut down and then we want to configure the sub interfaces so the first sub interface that we want to configure for the router and stick is going to be um, 20 for VLAN 20 encapsulation that one q the tag that we are going to be looking for is going to be tag 20 that is going to be coming from those computers then the ip address is going to be 192.8.20.1 um, 255.255.255.0 then you want to go ahead and actually not even exit you can just go ahead and go and do fast as zero slash zero that's 40 for VLAN 40 this VLAN 40 is going to be carrying those um, voice over IP it's going to be for these phones um, so we want to do the encapsulation that one Q is going to be 40 and the IP address 192.8.40.1 Okay, so exit. So we are looking good, guys. So we have configured the DHCP server for the data and also for the voice. Um, we configure also router and stick. Now we need to go ahead and configure the telephony services. So you want to do telephony service. And over here, you want to specify how many, the maximum phones that you want to support. Since we're only going to have two, we're going to say two. And we want to do the max um, directory number so the max extensions that you want to allow to configure is going to be two as well then you want to do the ip source address 192 that one is eight that uh, is going to be that 40 that one the port that i want to use is port 2000 and then we want to create the cnf files for the phones so the phones can get this um, cnf files there we go, that is done. Good, so after that we wanna configure the e-phone. So e-phone number one is going to have a MAC address. So we need to get the MAC address of that phone. So the first phone that we wanna get the MAC address is going to be for this one. And the MAC address that you wanna get is not the MAC address from the switch. It is the MAC address from VLAN one. Um, so as you can see right now, it is 000.0C7C.82E0. So that's the one that we want to configure over here for this phone. Because if, and if, if you put the incorrect MAC address, uh, this phone won't be able to register into the telephony service, right? So, like I said, it is 0000, 000, 000 that's 0C7C, zero um, that's 82E0, and I did not memorize that. I wrote it down before the video. That's why I know it. Okay, enter. Then the type, 
it's basically the model of the I, this IP phone and the model of this IP phone it is at 7960 so we are going to type over here 7960 all right then we want to do the e-phone number two we want to specify the mac address like i said the mac address for this one it is coming from vlan one um, it is 00d0.9786.8768 that's the one that you want to enter right here and like i said if you put in the incorrect mac address it won't be able to register a6.8768 now you want to do the type and it is the same type of the same as the other one so it is a 7960 model 7960 there it is after it, uh, after we do that we need to go ahead and configure the uh, the directory or the extension number so we do exit and you want to do e phone e phone dash d n one for the first one so the extension number for this is going to be specify number let's say 2000 or let's just say 2001 then we want to go ahead and exit and we want to do the extension for the other e phone 2 and it's going to be 2002 for the other phone there we go so after that is done what we have left is that we can do we have to do exit we're going to do e phone one button one colon one for the e phone one then for the e phone two we are going to be using button one colon two there we go so that has been configured all of it is good so what is going to happen is i'm going to plug in this cisco device right here or the cisco ip phone and what is going to happen is um, it's going to go through the ip phone boot process and the boot process goes like this and the first step is that it's going to communicate with the switch via cdp so this phone is going to communicate with the switch via cdp uh, cdp to get its vlan configuration so it's going to get vlan 40. then it's going to send a, a dhcp request to get its network configuration including the ip address of the T tftp server which we configure for option 150 if you guys remember that from the DHCP server in this router so it's going to get all of that then it's going to contact the TFTP server that it received from the DHCP uh, request and it's going to get its configuration file and then after that it is going to register with the call manager and get its phone number or its extension so let's go ahead and do that we are going to go ahead and plug this bad boy in And let's go ahead and go into the GUI so you can see right now it is configuring IP and if you advance this let's go ahead and advance it again you can see that the phone was configured with um, extension to um, 2001 okay so this phone was configured correctly so that is great so now let's go ahead and go into this IP phone and do the same plug it in go ahead and go to the GUI let's go ahead and advance a couple times and there we go so this one was configured with extension 200 2002 and how did it know it knew because of the mac address of this ip phones remember when we put in the mac address of those phones um the router knew that for that mac address it needed to be um 2002 and for this other mac address it needed to be 2001 so that's how it was able to configure the extension number so now if you want to test this out you can just go ahead and dial two from 2001 you want to dial 2002 and see um if it if it rings you can see it is ringing out now if we go into ip phone 2 you can see right now that we are getting a call coming from 2001 and you can go ahead and pick it up you can see they are both connected right now so you can go ahead and hang up and hang up over here now from 2002 let's go ahead and dial 2001 and see if it works i mean it should be working because we, we dial into this extension so it should be working the other way around there we go ringing and it's also ringing right here you can pick it up you can hang up call the line is disconnected let's go ahead and go over here and let's go ahead and hang up as well so now we need to get the ip address of this um data right for those computers so we are going to go into ip we are going to go into dhcp and we should be getting an ip address there we go 192.168.20.2 for this one and this one should be getting 192.168.20.3 because it is an x um, IP 
and there it is all working so now we need to test this see if it was working one one and two we, we are going to ping from this computer we are going to ping this computer so one and two that's one six eight that's twenty that two and there we go i'm able to ping um, and if you want to do it from over here which is also should be working because we uh, got a reply and all of that but you never know one and two that was eight that's twenty that's three so we are pinging this computer so we are able to ping each other so that is good are we able to ping the phones one and two that was eight it's probably 40 that's two we are able to ping 40 that two which is this ip phone we should also be able to ping 40 that three which is this ip phone number two so that is great we were also we were able to configure uh we were able to configure uh the voice vnn and the data vnn then we configure the router and a stick we configure the http server over here uh, we configure those sub interfaces so we are able to communicate with other vlans like vlan 40 so that's why we were able to pin vlan 40. then we configure the uh, the telephony services we configure the the e-phone um, we configure the extension and then we, i i told you guys what the boot process um, is uh, from whenever the ip phone how the ip phone gets um, configured so if you guys enjoyed this video i I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want you guys to, um, first of all, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video, right? Like this, like this video. Subscribe to my channel, and then I want you to follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips Guy. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you have a Twitter account, and if you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create a Twitter account, and then follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you on the next one, guys. I love you. Bye-bye.